Hi there, welcome to our video for introducing our higher level maths. We're continuing important geometry and now looking at simultaneous equations or points of intersection. When lines cross one another, they're said to be intersecting. You can think of a crossroads as an intersection. In America, they'd refer to it as an intersection. Where the two lines meet is called the point of intersection. And on this graph here, we can read off the point of intersection as 2, 3. It was quite easy to read off on that graph because they crossed over at the corner of a box, but sometimes it won't be as obvious. It'll be in the middle of a box, or maybe our graph will be scaled in such a way that it can be difficult to read the exact point where they cross over. And if you're graphing something like in business where you might be dealing with a lot of money, it's very important that you can be super accurate with the point of intersection because there could be thousands of you on the difference otherwise. So in order to be super accurate, we don't always rely on graphs, we use an algebraic method, so we use algebra to do it. And when we use algebra, we call them simultaneous equations, because there is one point that simultaneously satisfies both lines. So there's only one point that is on both lines at the same time, simultaneously. Looking at that, we have two equations of a line here, x plus y equals 5 and 2x minus y equals 1. So there are two equations of a line. There's two unknowns in these lines. There's an x and there's a y. In order to solve for two unknowns, I need to have two equations. If I want to solve for one unknown, I only need one equation. If I want to solve for three unknowns, let's say there's an x, y, and z, I would need three equations. So I have two unknowns, x and y, and but I have the two equations, so it's all okay. I add the two equations together. So I'm taking my two equations and adding them to turn them into one equation. So x plus 2x gives me 3x. y minus y is 0, they cancel each other out, and 5 plus 1 gives me 6. So you can see that I'm after taking my two equations and adding them to turn them into 1. So now I have one equation and one unknown because my y's have cancelled out, I only have an x left, so this is going to be x, 3x equals 6. To solve for x I will divide both sides by 3, and I get a value x equals 2. So x equals 2 is the x coordinate of the point that satisfies both equations. That's the x coordinate of the point of intersection. To find the y coordinate, I then take one of my original equations, only one of them, and I substitute in x equals 2. So I can take the first equation or I can take the second equation. Here I'm going to take the first one. So it was x plus y equals 5, and now I'm going to replace x with 2. So it becomes 2 plus y equals 5, y equals 5 minus 2, y equals 3. I've solved for an x coordinate for my point of intersection, and now I have a y coordinate for my point of intersection. It's good practice then to come out to the side and very clearly state point of intersection 2, 3. When someone's correcting your simultaneous equations, that's the first thing they want to see. Did you get it fully out? If you did, great. They don't have to go through your simultaneous equation in as much detail. And if you didn't, then they know that they have to look for a mistake in there. So be very clear out to the side, point of intersection, 2, 3. You might be asked to verify your answer also. So because this point of intersection works for both equations, I could have taken the top one or the bottom one. If I take the top one, then you will verify using the other equation. And you simply just put your point of intersection into that equation, and the left-hand side should equal the right-hand side if you've done it correctly. If you haven't, then you know you've made an error and you need to go back and check it. And you can see here that when I substituted in 2, 3 into the second equation of a line, I got 1 equals 1. So that does work out. The point is verified. A more complex example then is where, well, let's examine what's happening here. I have two equations of the line, and I'm going to follow the same steps as before, where I'm going to add the lines together. 
So 3x minus 4y is going to be minus 1x minus 2y minus 3y is minus 5y equals 17. So when I added those two lines, I didn't eliminate one of the letters. So that didn't work. What I need to do first is multiply the lines by a number. It doesn't have to be the same number that I multiply the top line by, that I multiply the bottom line by. So that I get either the same amount of x above and below or the same amount of y above and below. So I'm going to multiply the top line by 3 and I'm going to multiply the bottom line by 2 because then I'm going to have a 6y above the line and a 6y below the line. I'm going to tell people what I'm doing here. I'm going to multiply the top line by 3 and the bottom line by 2. So I will have 9x minus 6y equals 51 on the top and negative 8x negative 6y equals 0 on the bottom. Now we'll go back and try that step again where we add the lines. 9x take away 8x is x minus 6y minus 6y is minus 12y equals 51. Okay, so that still didn't work because I still have an x and a y. Nothing cancelled out. What I should do is when I multiply by a number, I'm going to try and get not only the same number of y top and bottom, but I'm going to get opposite signs. So I don't want an x out minus sign minus 6y over minus 6y. I want to have minus 6y and then plus 6y. So that when I add the lines, they cancel out. I'm going to multiply the bottom line by minus 2 this time instead of by 2, which gives me 8x plus 6y. Now when I add the lines, 9x plus 8x is 17x minus 6y plus 6y cancel out to be 0 equals 51. 17x equals 51. Divide both sides by 17 to get x on its own. And x works out to be 3. I now have an x value that satisfies the point of intersection. I bring down one of my original lines. So I'm going to bring down, you know, the bottom line this time. And that was minus 4x minus 3y equals 0. I'm going to fill in x equals 3. So minus 4 times 3 minus 3y equals 0. Minus 12 minus 3y equals 0. Bring over to the other side and I have minus 3y equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 3 to get y on its own. And I'm left with y equals negative 3. Four. My x coordinate point of intersection is x equals 3. My y coordinate is y equals negative 4. Fill that in nice and clear over to the side. x is 3, y is negative 4. That was points of intersection, intersecting lines, simultaneous equations. I hope you found it useful.